and welcome to World Today. I'm your host, Sharbeen Ali. Today, in a move to remove the Chairman Senate, Mr. Sadiq Sanjrani, that move was actually unsuccessful due to the fact that the opposition uh, fell short of three votes, in which case uh, it seems uh, it, there are 100 senators in the Senate at the moment and 45 votes went in favor of Mr. Sanjrani and the opposition got uh, sorry, the opposition got 50 votes and five uh, votes were uh, rejected because uh, they were not qualified. So um, this was a move by the opposition due to the fact that they claim that the government at the moment is incompetent and they're not happy with their performance in um, the economy, etc. And they did it so that they felt that it was uh, going towards a, a dangerous direction for the economy, yet at the same time, the reasons beyond that, which is that there were transparency uh, cases going on against the leaders of the two opposition parties. So there are many reasons behind it. But in the end, the chairman Senate, Mr. Sadiq Sanjrani, came out successful. And Mr. Sanjrani was the youngest ever uh, senator to uh, become chairman at the age of 39. And uh, he was the first ever senator from Balochistan. And at that time, he was voted into this position by both the PPP and the PTI together. And uh, then later Lately, the opposition jointly decided to try and remove him in an anti-government drive. So we're going to be speaking about that with our uh, correspondent and our colleague Ali Andaz, who was also there at the Senate today. Thank you for joining us, uh, Ali Andaz, today. So uh, what did you see over there? What were the sentiments like in the Senate today after this vote uh, was cast in favor of the chairman, Senate Ali? Well, Shermeen, what a, a way to start the month, uh, which is going to mark one year of PTI government. And uh, this uh, move by the opposition parties to uh, move uh, no confidence vote against uh, Chairman Senate Sadiq Sanjirani mm -hmm. and the way they were defeated, I, I think it's going to ba backfire uh, for the opposition in a very, uh, in a way that they will realize in the coming days. Uh, why did they do it and how did they fail? Uh, this uh, no confidence vote despite being uh, in majority in the Senate is something uh, which is uh, uh, remarkable for, mm. the, for the government, for the chairman Senate. Uh, as uh, the PTI senators and the uh, uh, senators from the uh, ruling party indicated that some uh, senators might vote uh, with, their, with their conscience and they were made fun of. Mm. And I think today uh, they, they, those uh, uh, senators who voted uh, for their conscience won uh, this election, and they, are, they, they actually made the difference in this election. In this election, because we know that uh, 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 the opposition had uh, around uh, 63 confirmed votes, yes, exactly. and uh, and still they fell short of three votes, and. This is remarkable. Uh, this is a big win for not only Chairman Senate, this is a big win for uh, the government as well. Mm -hmm. So now, um, what do you think happened? Because in the beginning, when the voting started, there were 64 senators who stood up, and there, or 63 you were mentioning, mm -hmm. and they were all present. Now, mm -hmm. at the end, they got 50 votes by the opposition. So what happened to the rest of them? What do you think? Was it a change of heart due to, like you're saying, following their conscience? Or it was a secret ballot. So they could have done anything without, or they could have voted for anyone without being known who, what they were voting for. No, no cell phones, I think, was allowed in there. Yes, uh, despite these things, as we know from the start, uh, when this talk of uh, no confidence mo uh, motion being moved against Chairman Senate started, uh, since the beginning, uh, the opposition parties were not on the same page. There okay. were differences within the opposition parties. We have uh, PMLN on one hand, we have People's Party on the other hand, both have a big number of senators uh, in, the, in the upper house. Mm -hmm. and, but right from the start, uh, before uh, opposition came up with uh, Mir Hasil Khan Bazinju as their candidate, there were a lot of differences within uh, uh, the opposition uh, ranks. And uh, to be honest, till the end, they were not able to uh, remove those differences uh, within their ranks. And this actually translated into today's uh, voting process. And as, uh, they, although uh, they, with their 67 strength, uh, one senator, Ishaq Dar is not in Pakistan, he hasn't mm. taken oath. Uh, Jamaat Islami abstained themselves uh, from the voting process. Five votes were rejected. And, and Chaudhry Tanvir was ill. And, and he, he was, he mm -hmm. was uh, not feeling well, they, and he didn't participate in the voting process. So still, despite all these uh, numbers, they were still uh, in good strength to uh, remove 
uh, Sanjirani. What happened, as I mentioned earlier, that it uh, being a secret uh, process, definitely those who voted uh, for uh, Sanjirani or didn't go with the party line, they, they might, their names might not be revealed in the coming days, but they, they are the ones who made the difference. And the other thing, uh, this move, why, 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 why the opposition wanted to make this move? Uh, there could be many theories, but some of the insiders are of the view that uh, since the opposition is under a lot of pressure because of uh, ongoing corruption cases, accountability uh, cases against them, they wanted to wriggle themselves out of these cases by mm -hmm. putting pressure on the government. And, uh, and was this in order to put pressure for another NRO, do you, in your opinion? Uh, yes, uh, there, there are also people who are of this view as well. By putting pressure on the government, they might get some, uh, something back from, mm -hmm. the, from the PTI. But that didn't work out. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they, uh, if, if they had been successful today, hmm. suppose they had overthrown the chairman Senate, what would have been their next move to destabilize the government? It wouldn't have made any difference for the PDI government, to be honest. It wouldn't have made any difference. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, uh, today's defeat shows uh, the moral standing mm -hmm. of uh, the opposition parties, which they have been uh, trying to push this uh, agenda for, trying to push this uh, idea before the masses that the PTI government is a failure, they are not uh, in control of the things, and uh, that they are, and, 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 and creating this uh, image on the social media and on the mainstream media that people are actually getting fed up from the government. That notion, that idea has been rejected today through this process uh, yeah. in the Senate. So do you think the opposition right now is in a, in a state of disbelief because they had that majority? So uh, what do you think their sentiments are? They are not only in disbelief, they are, I would say, they are in a shock mm -hmm. because they were not ready for this defeat. They were, I have seen uh, Mir Hasil Khan Bazinjo, the, the opposition candidate, saying that he has already won the way he, the, the, on the day he was nominated. Mm -hmm. now, this was the confidence of the opposition Right. Uh, when it comes to uh, and he's also a Baloch leader and he's, he's also, a very respected yes, very uh, he's respected, a very respected exactly. senator uh, in his and province. he's fought for Baloch rights and equ equality there and all of that you know so they have had a similar sort of a profile but yet he yeah he was quite sure that he was going to no win. doubt about that that Mir Hasil Khan Basinjo is a very respected senator mm -hmm. and he has uh, spoken up for the uh, rights of Baloch people but what really matters is where do you stand yeah. at the time, uh, at such a time? And he was, uh, I will say, he was not standing uh, on the right on side, the right of, the, side. <laughs> which, of the history which has <laughs> been made today because this is the first time uh, no confidence vote has been moved against. This is the first time a no confidence move has been uh, moved against a chairman senate and also a deputy chairman. Mm -hmm. So, and well, What happens with the deputy chairman's uh, move now? Uh, well, uh, I think the more voting is currently underway okay. for the deputy uh, chairman. Uh, let's see what goes there. We will not speculate on the outcome of that uh, voting process. We'll only discuss what, what has happened today. And after today's defeat, uh, JUIF, Mulana Fazlur Rahman, which was the main driving force between uh, starting this movement of uh, no confidence motion against chairman Senate, he's going to be a disappointed he's, uh, person. Uh, after today's defeat and there are definitely uh, other opposition parties which were hoping for some way out of uh, this pressure which has uh, created upon them by their past deeds and also definitely they uh, blame the PTI government but there is no truth in them. Most of the cases against PMLN were registered during their tenure. Mm -hmm. PTI government, the federal government is only pursuing them. Right. Uh, in a build-up to the events of today, Bilawal Bhutto Zadari was very confident and he was saying that the chairman senate should just resign and he still has time, etc. because they were so confident that they would succeed today. And then they didn't. And um, the main reason, the whole backdrop to this whole situation was the accountability drive and the cases, like you had mentioned, against Nawaz Sharif, uh, Mr. Nawaz Sharif and Zardari, Asif Ali Zardari. So now, Mariam Nawaz Nawaz Sharif and Bilal Bhutto Zadari also, they decide to get together and they decided about a month or so back that they would uh, move this uh, resolution in the Senate. So um, now what happens going forward from here? Because they have now uh, not succeeded in this. What's the next move? Is there going to be a dharna? Is, is there going to be, a, uh, sorry, we have some breaking news. We're going to be right back after this break. Crazy. Are we going good? <laughs>
come back as you were just watching the move against the deputy chairman of the Senate has also been unsuccessful. So we'll continue our discussion with our colleague Ali Andaz. So now what we were discussing earlier, the, the resolution against the deputy chairman has also been unsuccessful. So he's going to stay as well. So all right. So now the status quo remains. So we were talking earlier about what will the opposition do next? Do you think they're going to do a dharna or they're going to go and protest or what do you think is their next move to try and in their anti-government drive? What are they able to do by law actually? Uh, first uh, with the deputy chairman, it was just a uh, retaliatory move by the uh, government to uh, yes. move a motion against deputy chairman. So that doesn't really uh, hold uh, any water in the, 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 the results about the deputy chairman. Now coming to uh, the what's next for the opposition, I don't think they have uh, really uh, many options, options before right. them. Mm -hmm. They have to accept uh, the change which has come. They mm -hmm. have to live with it, they have to go through with it, and they have to face the courts they are facing. There is no way out of it. If you ask about Dharna, they don't have the number, they don't have the support in the because public. Because Prime Minister Imran Khan, when he was in the US also, mm -hmm. he said that they can, you know, we'll give them whatever they want, we'll give them a container and let them protest and we'll send them food. And he was quite, uh, you know, relaxed yeah, everybody about Everybody knows, even the prospect. general public knows, even their uh, supporters know that they don't have uh, the number, they don't have the moral uh, ground moral to start ground, right. something like that. Uh, if you remember back in 2014 when uh, Imran Khan staged a sit-in uh, mm -hmm. in Islamabad, he had moral backing and he had the numbers to mm -hmm. do that. Uh, at this point, the opposition parties don't have that uh, number with them. And uh, earlier while you were uh, talking about the opposition parties, I was thinking uh, uh, that uh, one of the major reasons for today's defeat is their overconfidence of, uh, while you were mentioning, uh, Bilawal and Maryam. Actually, uh, this is one of the reasons uh, for their defeat, that they were way too overconfident about today's voting process. And in that overconfidence, the government, uh, the treasury benches got the time to make their moves. And mm -hmm. definitely they must have tried uh, their uh, moves, their maneuvering, uh, political maneuvering, which happens, in their, right. which happens all the time. And they were successful and they uh, shocked uh, the everybody. opposition, everybody today. Mm -hmm. And this gives uh, the government uh, today, uh, it will give the PTI government more strength uh, morally and politically as well mm -hmm. to uh, move on with their economic policies, to move with their uh, austerity process and other uh, policies that they are uh, trying to introduce in the, uh, in the governance and which, for which they are also facing opposition from uh, the opposition parties, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, this is going to be a backfire. Now, this this is the backfire the opposition parties are going to face, mm. that they have lost any, uh, what would you call it, that uh, sort of justification, justification, any justification mm. for their opposition to government policies today. Right. So the basis beyond this whole uh, move to remove the chairman's Senate was just to, uh, it was an anti-government drive and the basis that we we're talking about was the recent accountability cases against Asif Zadari and uh, Nawaz Sharif. So now uh, let's speak about this. Uh, like Prime Minister Imran Khan has talked about transparency and accountability over and over again and he's, his anti-corruption drive has been there throughout his campaign and he's relentless in this drive and at the same time NAB is an independent state organization and it, it's one of the tiers of the government but it's not controlled by the government which is another thing that the PTI government constantly repeats and has established. Now. Um, Ostensibly, this this was the, the reason that the opposition parties gave for making this move was that they didn't feel the government was credible and their economic policy, which we can talk about in later on in this program. But this accountability drive, uh, it just seems that um, now uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan has said that in the last 30 years, our uh, national debt has gone up from 6 trillion rupees to 30 trillion rupees and he's very rightfully asked that where did this amount of money go so um, this is just basically a drive to recover that money for the people and he's also justified it that he has said that a country that has corruption also will have it, poverty because poverty is linked with corruption so the transparency drive was a necessary evil the accountability drive and plus NAB is an independent organization and FIA they've just been given the free reign to do their jobs uh, among other uh, election manifestos of uh, Pakistan, Tariq and Saaf, uh, anti-corruption drive transparency was the benchmark. Mm. Imran Khan always talked yeah. about it. Exactly. Uh, 
since they are in government for the last one year, they can make uh, some policy changes. But if Imran Khan uh, backs uh, from his anti-corruption drive or his transparency drive, he's going to lose his voters, and he knows that. Mm -hmm. uh, he has been uh, emphasizing on the need to uh, recover money from these uh, corrupt leaders uh, and all these cases in the uh, accountability courts mm -hmm. uh, would definitely point to that direction. But uh, even we know that all the money that has been looted will not be recovered, but it definitely would will set a right direction for the government for uh, the future of Pakistan. Because uh, earlier the leaders, we know that how the uh, PMLN used to uh, go about its business, the Pakistan People's Party used to go about its business without any fear of uh, repercussions or consequences. Mm -hmm. uh, what PTI government is doing now, uh, in terms of benefits, it has less monetary benefits, but more in terms of setting the right direction, setting the uh, setting uh, the fear uh, in the hearts of those who are at the helm of affairs that there will be consequences for their actions, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the billions and trillions of money uh, that has been looted or uh, is tagged abroad. It will take a long time to bring that back. Bring that that may never be brought back, but it will definitely set the country in the right direction for the future uh, generations. Right. Okay. So now speaking again of about uh, accountability and the need for curbing corruption in the country, uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan has also said that uh, the the reason that major major foreign investors who he's met, leaders of uh, uh, CEOs of large mineral or corporations who would otherwise want to come and do exploration in Pakistan and other large companies, the reason they show a hesitation in coming to Pakistan and bringing their companies here is due to the fact that he, in his words, in yeah. Prime Minister Imran Khan's words, he said because people ask for money yeah. and uh, there's corruption, there kickbacks have been involved uh, and things like that. So he's trying to build that confidence back for investors that you can smoothly and transparently do business in Pakistan. So that is, that's one of the basis for the anti-corruption drive, so, so as to stimulate more investment in Pakistan. What would you like to say about uh, what is, uh, What uh, especially goes in the favor of uh, Pakistan, Tariq e Insaf, and the uh, present federal government is the image of Imran Khan, mm -hmm. which is of uh, a very up upright person. Mm -hmm. And whenever he goes abroad, he takes that image with him and that works for not uh, that works for him uh, in uh, uh, if you look at it from an election point of view, but it's in the favor of Pakistan, uh, the foreigners. Uh, he has links uh, not only in uh, UK and Europe, and he has also links in America. And uh, we know from the recent visit of uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan to the United States where he held a, uh, rally. a, 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 held a rally and the number of uh, expatriates who uh, participated in, in that rally shows the confidence of those people yes. in Imran Khan. And then later President Trump said that he's clearly a very popular Definitely. leader. Definitely. Because and I think the Americans were taken aback. This confidence of not only them. overseas Pakistanis, but uh, the confidence, this will build confidence in foreign investors who are waiting to come to Pakistan and explore the options that are available for business in Pakistan, for investment in Pakistan. And he has been saying this for the day one, that. Pakistan has huge potential, but what, uh, but where we go wrong is that uh, the investor, who, who definitely is going to come with the money, and he don't want to lose that money. Mm -hmm. He needs that confidence that my money will be safe, my investment mm -hmm. will be safe. And Imran Khan uh, creates that image mm -hmm. with his own uh, personality and with the way he talks and with the way he has presented the case of Pakistan in the last one year. That has built uh, the confidence uh, among the foreign investors that they can uh, safely invest in Pakistan. And we have seen especially the investment coming from the Middle East uh, in the last one year. Mm -hmm. And uh, more investment, more uh, business is in the pipeline right. uh, from uh, the West. Uh, we have seen in the past that uh, meetings and deliberations between Pakistan and United States have mostly remained related to security. But this time, uh, President Trump especially uh, pointed out that uh, both Pakistan and the United States are not engaging in trade the way they should be. Mm -hmm. And there is a huge potential for that. Yeah. Now, there, these signs are very good for Pakistan and uh, its economy, yes. which is currently in a very tight position. Right, and now that crowd that showed up in the Capital One Arena, which was huge, it was something like, um, I don't remember the numbers, but it was something like 30,000 people in the arena. It was a very large crowd. Mm -hmm. Now, you 
nobody can say that the army sent all that crowd or influenced people and things that would people blame here for the prime minister which he laughs at himself as well that it was generally people who loved uh, prime minister imran khan and it they were showing their support and they were totally outside of the country away from everything that's happening here that did lend a lot of credibility to his popularity number one as you said earlier um now as far as increasing the confidence in pakistan since prime minister imran khan has come into power the foreign uh, foreign relations victories that he's had let's get a little bit into that the us just now was seen as a very successful visit when prime minister imran khan came back from pakistan uh, to pakistan he said that i feel like i just won a cricket tournament a cricket world series or something to that effect so it was very seen as hugely successful and uh, then uh, you know prior to that all the um re-establishing of relations with Iran and then Afghanistan and helping out in the peace process in Afghanistan and all the confidence that mm -hmm. we're building with our neighbors and hopefully with India as well. He's made a lot of gestures with India as well. So what would you like to say about that? His foreign policy successes, I think, have been very, very well, been uh, great. Well, if you look at the uh, political uh, changes that are taking place, the tensions that are in the area uh, with regards to United States and Iran, Pakistan has to tread very carefully and Pakistan has been doing that and that, that is a, a success for Pakistan on its uh, foreign relations uh, front mm -hmm. and uh, not only uh, did Imran Khan say that uh, that the, uh, his tour to United States was a, was uh, a big success all the Western commentators who uh, were closely watching Prime Minister Imran Khan's visit to United States termed it a huge resounding success for mm -hmm. Pakistan and uh, what uh, it really translates into or what we uh, should wait uh, as a result of this tour uh, in the future is more business for Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Definitely there are some uh, uh, issues of security and matters related to Afghanistan and matters related to security in Pakistan as well. But uh, what, uh, what, would, what would benefit a common Pakistani would be the money, the business, the investment that would come from abroad right so investment is one main thing one of our you know our friendly countries have already pledged huge amounts of investment as well as aid to pakistan as well he also mentioned that he when he went to the us that he he thinks aid is not a good thing he would rather be on equal terms with all his uh, uh, foreign counterparts etc so he wants to make pakistan self sufficient and he's also said that he wants pakistan one day to be one of those countries where people come for jobs which is what everyone would like to hope for um, also, now you, you're speaking about the economy and trade. He's also spoken about ease of doing business to be better one window operation in Pakistan, which was really badly needed over here. Um, as far as economic measures and all are concerned, we had some very uh, difficult decisions to make. But I, the IMF uh, loan was needed in order to build the confidence of the foreign investors as well and the international donor community. But this is very important. Uh, creating the ease of business. Pakistan is one of those countries which have uh, extensive laws, extensive legislations, but less uh, implementation. But when you come uh, for a business or when you get yourself into uh, any certain kind of activity where there are a huge number of laws related to that activity, then you get discouraged. And uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan talking about ease of business is to create a smooth system where those foreigners or even the local businessmen or investors who want to invest in a particular field or area, they don't get discouraged from this uh, thick bureaucratic setup that we have or red tapeism that uh, bogs down any uh, potential businessman or investor. And creating uh, this ease of business is to a sort of create a one window operation for all the uh, investors who want to invest in Pakistan, give them opportunity, give them all they need, all the support they need uh, to settle or get their feed in Pakistan. And when, definitely once they are in Pakistan, it will create jobs, it yes. will create business. Yes. And one more thing uh, with, with regards to the economy of uh, the country is you have talked about aid, uh, aid uh, depending upon aid. Uh, whenever uh, we have seen it in the past that uh, aid doesn't come without strings attached to it, mm -hmm. then it affects your policies, it affects your foreign relations as well. Yes. Now, if uh, being self-sufficient means where you can uh, 
devise policies, come up with uh, plans that are in your favor, com completely yes. and entirely in your favor. Yes. And you don't have to uh, carry a baggage, uh, baggage with yourself mm -hmm. uh, when you receive aid and then you have to be dictated. But it was a necessity at this time. To, to get the IMF No, I'm not loan, talking about the IMF right. loan. That was the definitely, mm, uh, there, there was no other option for the government mm -hmm. at that time. We have uh, seen many uh, economic experts say mm -hmm. that the, 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 uh, the dire economic situation that was uh, there, and that is still there mm -hmm. for the PDI government, for the entire nation as well. Yes, uh, we were facing a current account deficit crisis. Definitely. And yeah. something we had to be done to so bridge so much that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, problem and so much crisis that sooner or later, everybody in Pakistan had to uh, feel that heat. Exactly, and then we come to the austerity measures. Now we saw the Prime Minister himself, mm -hmm. he arrived in the USA on a commercial flight on Qatar Airways and he went like an ordinary person everywhere. He stayed in the embassy. He didn't spend millions of dollars on his tour and take along, you know, hundreds of people with him, etc. And uh, he showed the austerity drive personally at, on his own level and then going down to everybody else as well. And that's gone into the whole sort of system as well, that every Everybody needs to tighten their belts a, a little bit right now because of the fact that Pakistan is struggling. And he said that it's going to be a difficult time for a little while. Uh, definitely. I was uh, uh, definitely busy in Senate today and I was just watching a news channel where uh, they were showing the difference of uh, the amount spent on Imran Khan's visit to the United States and the previous yes. uh, visits. Incredibly now, huge uh, amount. If you take these uh, instances individually, they may not, uh, they may not sound very big but they will make a difference at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, being the head of the uh, government, he has to uh, go outside, he has to, he has to travel, uh, yeah. travel, and he, by setting an example during his visit to the United States, it's, it, it is definitely going to save Pakistan a lot of money. We, 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 we spend a lot of uh, public money on these protocols, yeah. uh, which shouldn't be there in the first Considering place. Considering that it's a poor country have, right uh, now. We have yeah. a huge, uh, we have a large number of ministers, but we have seen that these ministers have uh, opted for austerity. We have uh, secretaries, we have bureaucrats, uh, all, the, uh, it is something that really, you know, uh, everybody likes to have a protocol. Mm -hmm. but and it started with the Prime Minister not living uh, in the PM Prime House. Minister setting an example is a very good thing because it's coming from the top. Yes. And it will definitely translate uh, to the, uh, down to the uh, officers that's and sitting in the And it sets a precedent, it sets an example that he, he says what he means, he means what he says, you know. And he, it started from when he didn't live in the PM house and he lived in a smaller house on the premises because the bills associated with that house were so high and he felt it was unnecessary. So it started from them, from then and it's continuing now. And it, like you said, it, it also trickles down to his ministers and uh, people I'm, in government. I'm, I'm, I'm going to use a word that might have negative connotations. Imran Khan is stubborn. <laughs> And uh, when he talked about austerity, when he talked about uh, living like an ordinary citizen, despite being the prime minister of Pakistan, uh, and he's doing that almost. Well, we can say almost, mm. uh, because definitely there has to be a security protocol for the prime minister of Pakistan. We cannot compromise on that. We cannot afford to compromise on that. And uh, when he talked about these things, I remember uh, those the parties in power used to laugh at these claims of Prime Minister Imran Khan, and in the end, they paid for it. Mm. And uh, I, I would like to connect it with today's election as well. And uh, the way uh, Imran Khan, uh, if you remember the Panama case, the, the sitting government at that time, the sitting prime minister at that time, didn't uh, thought that it is something very big and mm. it would have consequences. Mm. But Imran Khan made them uh, pay the price for their uh, actions, for the right. money they looted from the people of Pakistan. Yeah. And definitely, as we have seen in today's election as well, yeah. that that overconfident opposition that still hasn't learned the lesson, mm. that they need to take PTI seriously, that they need to take Imran Khan seriously. Absolutely. Yeah, he, uh, but, but these examples, he has shown that he has 
political acumen, mm -hmm. which uh, I, I think opposition parties have still they undermine they under, they undermining. Yeah, they didn't actually believe mm -hmm. that. And he's also spoken about uh, the fact in his party that he's against political dynasties. You know, dynastic politics. He's against that. He's for a democratic process even within his parties. And he's also spoken about go getting over the times of the Raj mentality where everything was, uh, you know, uh, there was a lot of lavish uh, kind of lifestyles of the leaders and all of that. He's opened up so many of the uh, governor houses and places for the public, etc., which is unprecedented in Pakistan, which is why I think the people love him because of that. But at the same time, yes, prices of uh, items have gone up in Pakistan, which is make, which is what's made people a little bit you know, despondent. But that they say it'll temporary, it's temporary and it will stabilize. And uh, he's also come up with a lot of um, um, pro-poor uh, policies, which have, has not happened that to this extent before. A lot of social sector projects he's come up with that, for example, the Naya Pakistan housing scheme, which he's very proud of. I think this is the first time that people are being given a chance to own their own homes and in a respectable way, and which was previously not there. And there's so many other, the whole entire SAS program is so comprehensive. So. Um, what would you like to say? Uh, actually, we're just going to take a break because Shibli Faraz is taking, uh, he's speaking to the media outside the parliament at the moment, and uh, we can see him on uh, screen right now. And um, basically, uh, this has been a big day. It's been a, a very important day for the PTI as well as opposition. دیکھیں پہلی بات تو یہ کہ میں آپ کے سوال سے بالکل متفق نہیں ہوں کہ آپ نے یہ فتوہ فوراں جاری کر دیا ہے کہ سینیٹرز بکے ہیں اگر لینے ہوتے اگر اس قسم کام ہوا ہوتا تو ہمارے ووٹ بہت زیادہ ہو سکتے یہ تو بہت ہی قریب کا وہ تھا اور آپ پلیز دیکھیں یہ آپ جو ہے نا یہ پگڑی اور چھالنا بند کریں آپ جو ہے تو جو سینیٹ کے جو لوگ ہیں وہ سارے چاہے وہ اپوزیشن کے ہیں وہ چاہے ٹریجری کے ہیں وہ ایک باوکار لوگ ہیں اور نہ کوئی بکتا ہے اور نہ کوئی وہ ہے اس الیکشن میں کہ تو میں گارنٹی دیتا ہوں اگر ایسی بات ہوتی ہم نے بڑی محنت کی ہے یہ ایک مہینہ جو عوام کے پیسے ضائع کیے یہ سارا سینٹ معطل تھا یہ سارا جو سینیٹرز تھے وہ الیکشن میں لگے ہوئے تھے یہ یہ ہوتی ہے جو اپوزیشن کا کام کہ وہ ہاؤس کو بالکل پیرالائز کر دے دیکھیں میں آپ کو جناب میں آپ کو یہ بتاؤں کہ یہ پہلی دفعہ نہیں ہے جب میں دو ہزار اس میں آپ کو پتا ہوگا کہ دو ہزار پندرہ کے الیکشن جب ہوئے تھے جس میں پاکستان تحریک انصاف کے پاس صرف پانچ سینیٹرز تھے اور ہم نے ڈپٹی چیئرمین کا الیکشن لڑا تھا وہ اتفاق سے ان کو پاکستان تحریک انصاف کا کینڈیڈیٹ میں تھا اس دن تو ہم سینیٹ کے جغرافیہ سے بھی واقف نہیں تھے انیس ووٹ ملے پی ٹی آئی کے کینڈیڈیٹ کو اس کو آپ ہارس ٹریڈنگ کہیں گے اس کو آپ بکنا کہیں گے مجھے جب نہیں میرا یہ حق نہیں تھا کہ میں پوچھتا کہ جو انیس ووٹ مجھے کیسے ملے ہیں یہ کینڈیڈیٹ پہ بھی ڈیپینڈ کرتا ہے میں شبلی فراز نہیں دے گا پارٹی کے خلاف کبھی بھی ووٹ نہیں دے گا لیکن اگر آپ یہ کہہ رہے ہیں کہ یہ جو لوگ جنہوں نے کہ ووٹ دیے ہیں وہ صرف انہوں نے پارٹی نہیں انہوں نے سینیٹ کے ساتھ جو وقار اس کا جو وہ بحال کیا ہے اس لیے جس کو آپ یہ نہیں کہہ سکتے کہ انہوں نے وہ بکے ہیں آپ کہیں ڈس ایگریمنٹ ہو سکتا ہے پارٹی کے ساتھ ڈس ایگریمنٹ ہو سکتا ہے یہ سیکرٹ ووٹ ہے اس لیے اگر آپ مجھے اس انیس ووٹ کا بھی حساب لے کے دیں جو آپ سوال مجھ سے کر رہے ہیں نا آپ مجھے اس انیس ووٹر کا بھی جواب دیں کہ وہ کیسے آئے تھے ہمیں تو پانچ سینیٹرز تھے اور ہمیں تو کوئی ہم تو کسی کو جانتے بھی نہیں تھے تو وہ کیسے انیس ہو گئے آپ وہ سوال کا میرا پہلے جواب دیں وہ حساب میرے ساتھ دیں آپ عوام کو بھی دیں پھر یہ سوال کریں کیا چیز وہ پاکستان پاکستان سینیٹ کے ممبران تھے جناب علی سینیٹ آف پاکستان کے ممبران تھے یہ آپ مجھے ایک بات بتائیں آپ جب اس طرح کے ہاؤس کو انسٹیبل جب ڈیموکریسی کو انسٹیبل کرتے ہیں تو پھر کسی کی طرف اشارے نہیں کریں آپ یہ ذمہ داری ہے پولیٹیکل پارٹیز کی کہ وہ اپنی جمہوریت کو سنبھالے رکھیں اور کوئی ایسے سٹیپ نہ لیں جس کی وجہ سے ہاؤس ڈی سٹیبلائز ہو ہاؤس عدم استحکام کا شکار ہو تو اس لیے یہ بات نہیں نہیں دیکھیں قبضہ تو یہی ہے دیکھیں 
ये तो फिर इसीलिए तो इलेक्शन हमने किए हमने तो पहले एक सात दिन में जो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल प्रोविजन थी हम उसको इस्तेमाल कर सकते थे लेकिन हमने कहा कि हम मजीद इसको तूल नहीं देना चाहते तो हमने इलेक्शन के लिए वो वो किया तो फिर आप एक तरफ रिजल्ट इलेक्शन के माने ना एक तरफ आप कहते हैं कि जी किसने किया किसने नहीं किया वो पूछ रहे हैं कि जी किसने इस्तीफा दिया कि नहीं दिया वो चले गए हैं वो देखें ये हर सेनेटर के हर एक अपना फैसला था आपने देखा है ना तो कोई वहाँ पे कोई ऐसी वो हुई ना कोई कैमराज अलाउ किए गए हर चीज़ जो है ना एज पर लॉ हुई मेरा सवाल फिर आपसे ये है कि पहले आप मुझे उस 19 सेंटर सेनेटर्स का जवाब दें जिन्होंने वोट दिया था मुझे देखें देखें बिल्कुल देखें जी हम अपोजिशन को दोस्ती का हाथ बढ़ाते हैं इस सेनेट में और अगर अपोजिशन ने अपनी जो अकाउंटेबिलिटी ड्राइव या जाति अपनी लीडरशिप को बचाने के लिए हाउस में रखना डाला तो उसको जाहिर है कि हम बहुत डिस्कस डिस्करेज करेंगे लेकिन ये हाउस उनका भी है हमारी ये तो है हम उनसे कोई बिल्कुल जिस तरह के सादिक संजरानी पहले हाउस चलाते रहे थे बिल्कुल उसी तरह बराबरी की सतह पर बल्कि हमारे दो एक दो छोटे गिले भी थे कि वो हमें ज़्यादा वक्त नहीं देते थे वो औरों को वक्त देते थे देखें अच्छा ये अगर वो ये वो ये कहेंगे कि जी हमारी नालयकी थी और क्या वो क्या कह सकते हैं ये हमारी नालयकी थी ये ये जीत जाते अब जो है तो दूसरी जो अदम एतम थी हम चाहते तो उसको नहीं कर सकते थे वो जो अपना मांडी वाला साहब के अगेंस्ट जो हमने डाली थी तो उधर फिर कोई और कुत नहीं आई हमारे लिए देखें हम तो इस इलेक्शन में देखें यही बात है कि एक तो आपको जेन में रखना होगा कि कोई पॉलिटिकल पार्टी वो नहीं चाहती कि वो पॉलिटिकल कॉस्ट पे करे और पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज़ ने माजी में अपनी हुकूमत बचाने के लिए कोई फैसले नहीं लिए जो कि मुल्क के लिए बेहतर हों हमारी पार्टी मुल्क के मफाद में जो फैसले हैं वो ले रही है और ये जो महंगाइयाँ हैं ये सारा हमारे इनका को फरा अदा कर रहे हैं हम जो पिछले दस साल में इन्होंने हुकूमत की है जो कर्जे लिए हैं जिस तरह से कि इस मुल्क के वसाइल को पैमाल किया है बर्बाद किया है ये उसकी कीमत हम सारे पे कर रहे हैं हम भी इसकी वजह यही है कि जब आपको इस कर्जे जो लिए हुए हैं हमारी अपोजिशन ने पहले उन्होंने तीन खरब रुपए जब आपको सूद देना पड़ता है तो फिर आपको पता चलता है कि ये पैसे कर्जे के लिए किस लिए गए हैं ठीक है That was Senator Shibli Faraz, who was refuting the claims that there was horse trading going on during this election, and he said that the result that came out also reflects on the candidate himself. He's been a very fair candidate, uh, Senate Chairman uh, Sadiq Sanjrani, and that he's they've often had a gripe with him for giving more time to the opposition to speak in Senate. So we're going to have Ali. Let's have another last comment from you about what we just heard right now. What would you like to say about that? I would only say. i wish the opposition hadn't done it mm -hmm. they don't realize uh, the long term consequences not only for the democracy in pakistan but for themselves as well and uh, some might say that what happened today will actually strengthen democracy i hope it does but uh, it has uh, left a bad example that uh, opposition parties opposition leaders uh, for their own personal interest personal gain can uh, attempt to disrupt uh the process of democracy right yes and with a, a relatively popular senate chairman who everybody seemed to like but they had earlier mentioned that it was not against a move or there was the move was not against him personally it was against the government i remember the statements from a uh, uh, few uh, opposition senators who couldn't believe when this uh, movement started for a uh, moving a no confidence vote against uh, chairman senate sadiq sanjrani they couldn't believe that uh, their party has actually done it they thought there were rumors which are not true but today here we are uh, we had a vote and uh, luckily yeah it they, showed the confidence in the gentleman mr sadiq sanjrani thank you so much ali andaz for joining us today and giving your insights on this topic Thank you for being with us today on World Today. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today's program. We'll see you next time. It's bye-bye from now from Sharmeen Ali and our team at World Today.